Home Assistant's July release of 2025.7 is landing today, and this month we have new dashboard cards, a big new voice feature, something called sub entities, and a new and improved integrations page. First up though, we have two new dashboard improvements in this release. The first being that there is a brand new redesigned areas card, which I am a big fan of since it's very close in functionality to cards that we used to build in YAML for minimalist dashboards, which is super cool. And it is of course the same design language as the tile card, but with a few extra options. So if you head over to your dashboard, edit it and search for the area card, you will see some new additions. Firstly, you can now change the display type from area picture to the icon to compact mode with no image. Or finally, you can display a camera image to get a live feed of the room or the area that the camera is in. You can also attach different alert classes, which will show you an alert icon when in an alert state, such as a motion or a door sensor. And you can also attach different sensor classes too, which will show up under the name of the area. Next, under interactions, you can add a navigation path to a sub view, which will house all of the controls and sensors for that area. And then finally, under features, you can select the position of the controls and add a feature which allows you to have quick toggle buttons for the area, which if you press the little pencil icon to edit, you can go in and choose which type of button or buttons you want to include on the area card. I'm a big fan of this new card. I've been wanting something like this for a while since it gives the same functionality as my minimalist dashboard, almost. One feedback I do have is that while I can see what they were trying to do with making it easy to only pick devices that are assigned to an area, I think it ends up being a little bit more confusing than it should be. For example, sensor classes and alert classes, I don't think are that intuitive. And I think it would be better if you could just pick an entity from a list. Same with the camera view, actually. If you select camera view, there is no entity to specify a camera. It just automatically pulls the camera that is assigned to an area without you getting to pick it, which is fine. But the problem with this is, is if, if you have more than one camera assigned to an area, it just picks one at random and I can't seem to find a way to override this to pick the other camera. Same thing with the controls, like I wish I could just specify individual lights or switches rather than toggle uh, all lights or all switches all at once for that area since that might not be ideal depending on the situation. Maybe we'll get that kind of thing in the future, but I am a really big fan of this new card and I can't wait to start using it in my dashboards. Next, speaking about the areas card, the next change is that the auto dashboard now has an improved homepage that makes use of this area card in your dashboard. So once you upgrade, if you are using the new areas dashboard, it will now use the new area card to clean things up and keep the homepage nice and minimal. Also, I don't think I saw this in this release, but I did notice that if you go over and create a new dashboard, there is now a new visual tool here for picking different options. Cool little touch, and I do love that they are sprinkling this style of visual throughout the UI now. Another change in the UI is over on the integrations page where the layout has been revamped with the more modern Home Assistant design. That's because it goes hand in hand with another new feature called sub entries, which also appears in this release. And essentially this allows an integration to have sub integrations. And the reason for this is to make it easier to add multiple instances of a single integration by sharing things like API keys or passwords. So for example, in previous releases, if you add, for example, the OpenAI integration, you'd have to create an API key to connect it as normal. But then if you wanted to add another instance of the OpenAI integration, for example, to use a different model, you'd have to find your API key again and enter it and so on as for as many integrations as you want to add or as many instances as you want to add. But now in this release, once you've entered your API key once, 
If you want to then add another instance of the OpenAI integration, it will know that you have already specified an API key and just reuse this one without you having to go away and find it if you manage to save it and re-enter it. It will just always happen automatically, which is really nice. Now, this does need to be added on a per integration before it will support it. And as of this release, the Anthropic, Google AI, MQTT, Olama, OpenAI, and Telegram integrations all now have support for sub entries. This release also has a big new feature for voice, which is a brand new service called Ask Question, which lets you essentially be more proactive with your smart home and make smarter automations with your voice. So this service, of course, lets you ask a question through your voice PE or other voice speaker in Home Assistant and then do different things depending on the response to that question. So, for example, if you walk into your house from work uh, in the evening, you could have your speaker proactively ask you if you want to start playing music and then automate based on different answers. Maybe for example, you could ask which playlist or artist you want to start playing and then use that in your automations. Or let's say you have a super fancy coffee machine, maybe it could ask you what type of coffee you want when you wake up in the morning. This was kind of possible before, but it did require the use of an LLM. However, this release brings this to local voice using local speech to text. So you don't need an LLM, which is always great. And I think this opens up a ton of possibilities in making a more proactive smart home rather than a reactive one. This is more of a complex service than some of the others. So if you want to see more content on how to use this service, then do drop your requests down in the comments for a future video. One other nice quality of life improvement in this release is full screen YAML editors around the UI. Very useful if you're adding template code to automations, for example. You can see this in action if you head over to an automation like a notification that might use a template. And if you hover over the editor box, there is the little full screen icon, which when clicked, will allow you to full screen rather than trying to work out all your templates in that little cramped box. Nice. Finally, for the big stuff, not so much a Home Assistant feature, though it definitely does add to Home Assistant, and that is that ESP Home will soon support sub-devices. So where this would be useful is if, say, for example, you had an ESP Home device with an IR blaster on it, and you use that to control lots of IR devices in your house. Previously, that would just show up as one ESP home device with your TV, AC unit, hi-fi, and so on, all just chucked into that one device. But with this update, it's gonna let you logically split out devices so that you have your ESP home as kind of like a gateway device on its own. And then you'll have the TV will be represented as its own device. The AC will be represented as its own device and so on. So it's a nice way of splitting them out to be better or more logically represented in Home Assistant. This is already added in Home Assistant as of this release, as I understand it, and it will soon be introduced into ESP Home in the next update, which will be landing in a few weeks' time. As for the little things this month, firstly, there is even more controls added to the real link integration. User customization to entities and devices will now be restored even if a device is deleted and re-added to Home Assistant. Love that. Camera snapshots now use Go to RTC to improve performance when taking a snapshot. Templates see a bunch of great additions. There is a new button for Music Assistant that lets you add the current playing song to your favorites. The Olama integration now supports the Think parameter for supported models. Shopping list now supports marking items as complete using your voice. And finally, Matter now supports dishwasher alarm support and battery storage devices. In terms of new integrations this month, we have four new integrations in this release, including PSN for tracking your PlayStation stats and games. 
And we also have one new integration moving over from YAML into the UI, which we love to see. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have just four entries this month, all of which are minor. So just be sure to have a double check of those before updating as always. And that is about it for this month. This was a much shorter release cycle than usual, but still lots of great features packed into this release. I particularly do like the addition of the areas card. And in fact, I'd already started planning most of the dashboard video that we're gonna be doing soon. So I'm glad that this came along just at the right time as I really wanted something like this for that video. So do be on the lookout for that video coming soon in the next couple of weeks. Do let me know your favorite new feature down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.